This tutorial was brought to you thanks to the supporters on the screen. Check out tapjiles.com to find more Dreams resources, donate to support my work, or engage my services to get private instruction or help on a project one on one. We've got this. So the idea of this is um, it's kind of stop motion, but it's a lot uh, quicker and easier to do than actually making like each of these little subtle changes um, in a in keyframes and stuff. So I've made this uh, head, and it's got eyebrows and a mustache, and we'll animate that stuff um, in kind of a stop motiony way. So there's a few different ways of doing that. One would be to uh, use a timeline and grab a keyframe and say, I want that one to raise up there. I'll have like different layers for the different keyframes or something. And uh, because we want it to be, to have like a stop motion feel, we'll just, we'll not use any blends. But then you get this kind of um, snappy, like frame by frame feel to it. And then you'd have like another keyframe for this where it's slightly different. So you have lots of keyframes and they all kind of move the um, positions slightly and stuff. You may notice they kind of go a, a bit blurry when they move, which wouldn't happen if it was a uh, real stop motion. Uh, because you just have individual frames taken as opposed to actually moving while the, f the photo is taken or something. So if you go into the, uh, the cameras section and get grade gadget, then you can turn down the motion blur and now it just snaps to the new positions without any blurriness, which is cool. You can double up these keyframes by kind of overlapping these. So uh, if that one's there, and then we have another one there for some reason, then if they're one off the other, they'll just be at that position and then at that position. If you overlap them though, then that will be active and so will that. So it'll kind of average them out. So now it, you get an extra frame in between for free like that so that can save on keyframes but it's it's still a little time consuming making sure those uh, look right those intermediate frames so now i'm going to look at a new method which uses the blend modes so normally you you use that kind of thing use uh, l1 and x on between the keyframes and then it will animate between them and just figure out what the animation will be and it's nice and smooth but for a stop motion animation you don't want it smooth you want it to be kind of jerky so i'll show you how to turn any normal blended animation into a stop motion animation so i'll go in here and i'll need a bit of logic so i'm going to use a microchip to hold everything in and i'm going to use a secondary timeline you could use a timer for this, but timelines are a little easier to kind of see because you can see like the time notches and you've got the speed um, setting and things like that you, you can use for different things. So it's just beyond the three second mark. So I'll just put it around three and I'll put this around three and now they'll last roughly the same amount of time. But you actually have a output uh, from every timeline and I'll show you what that does with a value slider. If I wire that the playhead position into a value slider, you can see what that output gives you. And it gives you between 0 and 1 the percentage of how far through it is. So if you look at that, as it gets towards 1, it's towards this end of the timeline. Also, there's a special input where if you grab a wire, this extra node appears. If you don't have a wire, it's not there at all, but it's kind of at the bottom of the playhead line. So then you can wire that into the playhead itself. And now I can send it percentages and it will go to that point um, along the timeline. So 100% would be this end, 0% of that end. And you can just send it from any wire going into the playhead. So we could actually use this timeline and plug that into the playhead. 
So now if we play time, they both play kind of in sync uh, with each other. But then if I tweaked this one and made it go faster, it will go, both will go faster and slower. Both will go slower. And you can even um, set it to loop. And then because this one's looping, that is controlled in the playhead. So that one loops as well. The whole point of doing that though is to be able to freeze this value at different points. So I've wired the kind of timer timeline into the signal manipulator and out of the signal manipulator into the value slider. And now if I play it goes through just as normal as if nothing was happening. But you can also turn on freeze output. So now the playhead um the playhead position isn't isn't getting through it's just being paused or whatever value and then if you turn it off and on again it'll use a new value uh, so if we put that into this timeline then we'll be able to freeze that value of the playhead of this timeline so I'm kind of kind of getting frozen moments um, at whatever point I froze it at so now we can kind of time out when when this becomes frozen. We'll leave it on frozen uh, by default. And if we just use a keyframe to turn it off, then while this keyframe is powered, it's not going to be frozen and it will get the, the latest um, value that's going through it. And then when I um, unpower that, then it will become frozen again and pause it at that point. If I just use a timer for now, and I'll put um, timer finished into reset so it kind of loops. I'll wire this pulse into the keyframe, which means it will turn on and off really quickly, which means that will um, stop freezing and get the new value and then freeze immediately and use the new value, keep, keep sending it out. So now if we look, every time that triggers, these kind of uh, move and you can see the playhead just skipping to the right point and pausing there. We can control this with a timeline also. If I use timeline, if you just put this keyframe into the timeline, we can make that really short and put this on loop. And now every time it hits that keyframe, it's getting the new frame and um, freezing on that. Now, if you make it really short, we can use it in a particular way. So. Uh, you can use L1 and right to expand it and see the time better for short timelines. It's very useful. So it's kind of keeps on hitting that keyframe. So this is it normally. So it's very smooth. And then when we use the control the playhead, then we get this kind of stop motion feel. Now because it's going faster, it actually sometimes misses this keyframe, which is why you get this kind of stop and start feel, uh, which isn't ideal. So we're actually going to do this slightly differently. We're going to add on a switch and make sure it doesn't go to the end because we want it to be go on and off, on and off. And we'll put this keyframe out here again. And so now we have an on and off signal. If this was going slower then that switch is staying on for quite a long time. So if we put that into the keyframe, it would just be on for a long time and you'd see the uh, the little uh, animation blending stuff, which isn't what we want. We want it to be kind of instantaneous. So now we can put a signal manipulator outside and wire it through there. And the signal manipulator has a pulse on input on. So when this goes from off to on, as in when it gets to this point in the timeline, then it will it will send a pulse out of here. So then we can use that to power the keyframe. So we've got the switch and every time the switch goes on, it, it flickers the keyframe on and off, which gets the new value and freezes it at the new point. So that's, that's exactly what we want. Um, but now we have this useful way of like adjusting the playback speed making it really slow or we can make it really fast and like almost smooth and you can like adjust this uh, really easily and we can also we can even add a controller sensor with remote control mode and then 
use a keyframe to control this speed of this um, freezing timeline. So uh, let's make it really slow and then we'll make it faster and we'll use R2 to dictate how fast the um, those updates happen. So if we just don't hold R2 at all, that's going really slow. And then if we hold R2 more, then we get a, a smoother animation. So what you could do is have like smoother animations for um, more emotive parts where it moves fast, and then um, slower animations for when the, the changes are subtle so that it feels more like stop motion. So because this controller sensor is now controlling this speed, what you could do is put this on possessable mode and then tweak the microchip and tell it to apply to this object. Uh, actually, we'll scope out and apply to the object of the group. Let's add a camera gadget so we can see what we're doing. And then we can possess this and like pull R2 to see how it affects the um, animation and so on. Um, and we could even record this. So if we do that to record the animation, then we can like speed up and slow it down for up here and just have that that's kind of controlling the overall speed of how, how quick it updates. Okay, so this keyframe now affects those eyebrows and like makes them go like that. And we can, instead of controlling the, um, the timing of this, I'm going to wire R2 into the eyebrows themselves. So now I can possess this and kind of puppeteer the actual eyebrows. that and I think now we should be able to let's not have it loop right. so that's like four and a half seconds so let's put it roughly the same over here so it's even working with possessed performances which is pretty awesome what you could even do is control this the timing of this using keyframes in the main animation. So if I, if I wanted to make sure during this part it was extra fast, I could do that. And then during that part it will just be smoother. So you can sort of program in how fast the uh, stop motion animation is for certain parts of the animation within the animation timeline itself. And you could even blend those if you wanted to. So if I wanted it to s slow down blended style, so you could do that um, very simply. And you can um, combine this with stuff like replacing sculpts with other sculpts. So say, say we had this mustache and then we had another mustache that looked slightly different, kind of in the same place, but then we turn that one off. Then we could have a keyframe which turns that one on and the old one off. If we just stick that in a timeline, see how it looks animated. So I'll do that, make it loop, put the mustache twitch on there. Cool. So we we'll probably want that a lot faster if it's meant to be like him talking or something. There you go. And we'll turn that off again. So now we have this very simple um, mustache twitch while he's uh, trying to speak. And we can have, um, if you only want that to happen while he's speaking, we could turn that off. And then in the main timeline, here, use a keyframe to turn it on. And then you have this um, fine-tuned like uh, animation for where, while he's speaking in general, or this could be logic that randomizes blinking or something like that, anything like that. Then you can have a keyframe in the timeline that says only do that during certain times, like this. But because of the slowing down of the um, overall animation, uh, sometimes it won't quite get there at the right time, so you'll have to be careful about how you kind of set these things up. Uh, but it's all kind of combinable in all sorts of ways, however you want to do it. So here I've done the timing for the frames 
and control that in the timing timeline which makes some sort of sense so you could do that kind of thing as well so that it isn't affected by this kind of jumping to different points hey it's tap giles here i've been working hard with the community helping on forums and answering questions across the internet and more tutorials are being added to my patreon all the time for my early access supporters to enjoy and learn from most recently i've added videos on many aspects of animating paint and creating precision line work a simple method of giving the player in-game directions to their next destination, a quick golf putting mechanic that's easy to get started with, and a new way of using a puppet to make a camera rig, with an optional GoPro shaky cam feel to it. More advanced topics are being covered as well, such as an implementation of Conway's Game of Life that makes beautiful patterns spider across the screen, an in-world number display in the style of a cash register. Word lock puzzle logic inspired by the amazing game Lock. And transform recording, a new method letting you record the position and rotation of any object as it moves in the scene. Along with instructions on how to use a new cinematic camera rig built on this technique. These tutorials and much, much more are available now at patreon.com slash tapdials, totaling 9 hours of video to learn from. And if you appreciate my help online, this is the perfect way to support me and keep my help coming. Sign up at patreon.com slash tapdials for just $3 to get 9 hours of video tutorials today. Thanks for your support.